Now, with that factor in mind, can we truly have criminal justice reform if we never fix the social and economic status of those individuals? Mm -hmm. Anybody can. On the panel. Yeah, of course. I don't know about social. But how about this? I make it even even tighter. If we're not financially on the same playing field, or a liter we don't have the education where we're going out to the world, we don't know what's going on at all, we don't have any money, can we truly be on the same playing field when it comes down to success? Because now we're always playing from behind. Mm -hmm. So we talk about criminal justice reform, why don't you still? Now you're always gonna have, I talked about this with you before the family, you're gonna always have those random people that go off the wall, and they have But a lot of people are doing this from necessity. When I was DA, I had a case, the guy had burglarized a home, he had a long record of, of stealing. But when he burglarized the home, it was 35 degrees outside. He didn't take anything. It was an abandoned house. Does he deserve 20 years in jail for We gotta think about that. How did we get here? This man is homeless in a house. Yes, he did commit the crime, no doubt. But why did he commit the crime? And so if he's not on that same playing field starting out, he might end up committing crimes that he shouldn't have invented their life early. So I'm asking, can we truly have criminal justice reform if we don't address how we even got to the courthouse? Because you gotta get to the courthouse. You gotta get there. So how do we get there? Lack of education, lack of hope, lack of a family environment. I think it's been seen that if you have a black man in a home, that's there to help. That ain't even a mentor. Those kids are getting a little bit better. Yeah. It means something. Little, little interaction. You ain't gotta be there all 24 hours a day, but it's just there. They can see you, and if they can't see you, they're not gonna think about being anything else but the rappers or the athletes because they can make it. But they gotta see it. They gotta know that glorious beauty exists. So my question once again, can we have true criminal justice reform if we don't reform the kids before they even get to the criminal justice system? That's a deep question. I, I think it's gotta be systemic and holistic. My family and I live in Grand Park. Pretty nice area. My wife's a dentist, I'm a lawyer. The school in our community that my son, who will be six at the end of this year, can walk to, six, right? Wow. Time to fly. Wow. Time to fly. Wow. fly. Yeah. He's amazing. He is. <laughs> <laughs> but Kingsley, our son, Excellent. the school, thank you, the school, right? I mean, he can walk to it almost, almost by himself, mm -hmm. three blocks away. The rating is a four. It's a great community though. Mm -hmm. But if we move to Buckhead, the school is nine, there, two schools, nine and 10. I, I mentioned my wife's a dentist, I'm a lawyer, we're not wealthy, but you could call us middle class, man. Mm -hmm. so, so when I go around the corner to Thomasville Heights, mm -hmm. it's even less of the opportunity in those public schools two miles further. The point is, if we don't improve our educational system mm -hmm. and the commitment by way of resources mm -hmm. to education, mm -hmm. we challenge the prison and pipe school to prison pipeline, right? Or drop out of school to go to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. But we don't also fight enough to make sure that our schools and our educational systems are well funded at the legislative level. <laughs> People need to stay in school for sure. But but my son should get the, the same public education right. and the same dollars should be spent as they are in Buckhead and every other area. And those who live in impoverished communities, they, their kids should get the same thing. Until we get that, just that component, we don't have a fair shot. And that rolls right over into what you can earn when you get out of school, if you get out of school. Mm -hmm. and, and what you're, Right, what your prospects are based on aptitude tests, et cetera, for your future. It's so, so, so layered and involved, every aspect of our society. Um, I just want to, and not that I don't just want to agree with everything you want to say at the prosecutor's lunch. Um, <laughs> judge every single day. But I am going to speak to you right now as the key is, that is from the ghetto. The poorest zip code in the state of Texas. That is where I grew up. We had no resources. We had no real opportunity. 
opportunities for education. <coughs> Every time I told anyone that I wanted to even go to college, I was laughed at, let alone that I was going to be a Georgia State judge. And so, again, The junkie taught me my multiplication at five years old. Didn't learn in school until I was eight. There were people in our community who were teachers who taught our children what we needed to know. I'm not saying we don't deserve and need more resources, but at what point do we deal with the reality of where we are? My reality was not, no one was coming to save me. But I didn't need to be saved, I had to decide. And, and we have to start sending that message as well. We are amazing people of the highest.